Hi everyone! Recently I installed Coreboot on my XT30 and although the process is pretty simple I still want to talk today a little bit about the difficulties I encountered during the process and discuss the future of open source BIOS on our computers. Let's get this started. So first and foremost, what is Coreboot? Basically Coreboot is an open source BIOS replacement that you can install on your computer. Unfortunately though, the list of supported hardware is pretty small and apart from Google Chromebooks, virtual machines and Lenovo ThinkPads, you can't really install anything. Moreover, Lenovo ThinkPad X230 is about the latest and most powerful laptop that you can install Corbett on. So why would you bother installing it on your laptop? Considering that the installation is pretty difficult and requires taking the laptop apart, connecting clips directly to the motherboard and literally risking your laptop. Well, Corbett replaces proprietary BIOS in your laptop and lets you install well, one of the supported payloads, they have CBIOS, which is basically uh, open source BIOS. They have Tiano Core, which is a new UEFI replacement. And you can also literally put Linux kernel inside the flash chip if that's the kind of thing you're into. But the biggest selling point of Coreboot is the possibility to neuter and in some cases completely remove the Intel management engine. In case you don't know, Intel management engine is basically a whole OS that is based on Linux kernel that runs on your laptop all the time, even when it's off, and has access to all the data on your laptop, including RAM. So it only makes sense to not want this kind of spyware anywhere near your computer. Unfortunately, Lenovo laptops released after 2009 do not support removing into management engine completely, but instead you can pretty much neuter it, leaving only a couple of megabytes of code inside your flash chip, which is, well, not perfect, but still better than nothing. So let's now talk about the process itself. So in this video, I want to focus on installing Corbett on X220 and X230. And although the process itself is pretty much similar, there is one big difference, and that is the flash chips. Basically, X220 has one flash chip that has BIOS, Intel Management Engine, Ethernet firmware, and everything on it. And X230 has two flash chips, one for BIOS and one for everything else which at a first glance makes the whole process more difficult because now you have to flash two chips. But actually it only simplifies the process because X220 keeping everything on one chip means that you'd have to build an image for each laptop and that using pre-built images is not possible and that you have to spend time compiling the image yourself. Whereas in X230 it's possible to install a pre-built image. So you might want to ask the question, well where do I get those pre-built images? And here's where the project called Skulls come into play. Skulls provides pre-built images for X230 which you can install on your chip without having to build one yourself. Moreover, if you want to neuter into a management engine, Skulls provides an easy script to do that. And you don't have to configure anything, you just run two simple scripts and it's all done. However, there is one little thing that I want to mention and that is the SPI speed in the Skull script is set to 128. This is excruciatingly slow and most modern chips are able to operate at much higher speeds than that. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to the fork repository in which I changed the SPI speed to something higher so you don't have to wait two hours like, well, I did. One eternity later. One more thing to consider is that if you compile the image yourself, you would have to include a VGA BIOS, which is a really tedious process. And of course, you can you can get by without one, but that would create some problems with uh, running Windows and some Linux distributions. And Skulls takes care of that as well. And one more thing that VGA BIOS allows is having a custom boot splash. I did one for myself. And if you want to have this boot splash as well, I will include the link to GitHub repository in the description, as well as a guide on how to make one yourself. CBIOS is kind of picky when it comes to the boot splash image and you have to save it in a special way in order for it to work, but I figured out the hard way so you don't have to. The good news is you don't have to take your laptop apart every time you want to change boot splash or something else. After installing Coreboot the first time, you can do it internally just by installing the flash ROM on your laptop. The only thing is that you will need to boot with a special kernel parameter I IMM equals uh, relaxed. So, at the end of the day, is it really worth installing Corbett in your machine? 
Well, I would say yes. You can get rid of instant management engine, your laptop boots up way faster than with stock BIOS, and contrary to popular belief, there is very little chance to actually break your laptop. <laughs> It could probably fry this chip. I don't actually know. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. I hope I gave you some useful information and something to think about and maybe answer some questions you had about Corebook. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.